Hello, my name is Joanna and I'm a fourth year medical student in New York City. Welcome to my channel here. I just want to talk about medical school related things or life as a student transitioning into residency or just life in general. It's my channel, so I'm going to talk about what I want. And today what I want to talk about is my experience as a third year med student in my psychiatry rotation. Um, so this is going to be a short one, but this should be fun. So let's get right into it. In my third year of medical school, my second rotation of the year was psychiatry. And I remember when I started my psych rotation, I was so good with the psych drugs already because I did internal medicine before I did psychiatry. And we actually used the psych drugs quite a bit in internal medicine and also my attending for internal medicine loved teaching he's a little bit abrasive but he loved teaching so i had a really good handle on the psych drugs which impressed the attending so that was fun and i got to it was really nice talking about the different drugs and why the physicians prescribe what they do you'll notice that when you get to psychiatry each psychiatrist kind of has their drug of choice, you know, like some psychiatrists, their first choice for anxiety is Lexapro. Some people, their first choice for anxiety is sertraline or Zoloft. Um, yes. And then for my psych rotation, like you're not doing clinical stuff. Uh, so I missed from IM, I missed doing physical exams on my patients and I missed um, being able to practice like blood draws and things like that. But in psychiatry, you talk to people. Like if you are not the best interviewer, psychiatry is the rotation where you will get your interview skills down and you really have to. Um, and you really have to make sure that you're going into your interviews very respectfully, um, very cautiously, very supportively because these patients are struggling oftentimes and they're kind of going through things that it's like, you know, when someone has diabetes, you can see like their blood sugars are A1Cs. When someone comes in as a trauma and they have like a gunshot wound or they have like a broken leg, you can see that. When someone has a psych, a psychiatric concern, oftentimes, because it's not something you can physically see, it tends to be easier to discount that experience similarly to pain if there if you don't see something outwardly to explain someone's pain it can be quite easy to discount it so psychiatry is the place where you learn to not do that you learn to be as empathetic towards your patient as possible if you go into psychiatry rotation with the right mindset and with an open mind and willingness to learn right Especially so my rotation was in the borough of New York City where I live. And so a lot of the patients are not white. So they're Latinx and Black, Caribbean, um, African. They are Asian. And we have so many patients from so many backgrounds that are minorities in the U.S., and so I identify with that patient population very heavily. So it was a little bit, I would say slightly triggering during the psych rotation because I just, I was really feeling for the patient. So I was like, wow, this could be, I even had a patient that would call me his cousin. Um, he was like, oh my gosh, you remind me of my cousin. So I'm going to call you my cousin, um, which was fine. Absolutely fine. And it was really nice. But just having that connection and that relationship with my patient, it made it so hard to see what they were going through and to sometimes see where their illnesses were being discounted or when they would end up in jail rather than in the hospital where they should have been. I think New York City, as far as I know, in this the area where I did my rotation, is really good about having NYPD escort people who are acutely having a crisis, like a mental health crisis, to the emergency room as opposed to to prison and that also includes like acute intoxication whether it's um with 
marijuana or like PCP where you become a little bit more belligerent or if it's crystal meth. Um, oftentimes when the police are called, if the, these patients are deemed that they need medical assistance, they are brought to the ED as opposed to going to jail. So I do like that. Um, uh, when I was in psych ED, so actually let me begin where in my psych rotation, it was normally eight weeks before the pandemic. For my year, it was six weeks. The two weeks that were removed were the two neuro weeks. And what we did was we did neurology online before we started the clinical year. So in my six weeks of my my rotation, I did a month of inpatient psychiatry. We, there were two psych wards in the hospital. So I did two weeks on one, two weeks on the other. And then the last two weeks of that six weeks, I was in the psych ED at the hospital. Um, the other option that you could have done for the rotation was consults. So there's a psychiatrist who does consults within the hospital. I didn't get to do consults, but I actually do have a psych elective for my fourth year. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to do consults during that elective. So in my two weeks of psych ED, you actually saw a lot of drug use in the ED there were PCP and crystal meth. And there was a time when there were a lot of people coming in with cocaine or... So yeah, there was actually a few patients that were young black boys, so like young African boys who could be friends of my brothers or friends of me, or like could be my brothers who are coming in after having smoked marijuana and having a psychotic break, a psychotic episode. Um, and what we thought may have been the first presenting signs of possibly schizophrenia. And for anyone who's interested, there is kind of a link between schizophrenia and marijuana use but I think as far as I understand the topic I believe it's kind of a what came first chicken or the egg thing is it that marijuana is kind of precipitating the schizophrenia and kind of a two-hit theory and like you have the genetics and then you add the marijuana and then you have um schizophrenia or if it's the other way around whereas the you're having the prodrome and you're becoming symptomatic and then you're self-medicating with marijuana to kind of keep those symptoms at bay. So it like it's actually more of a, a, a confounder as in these patients are more likely to use than oppo as opposed to because of use, um, you're kind of turning on the genes for it. Very interesting topic, if anyone is wondering, but I did see two um, young African boys and that it just, it hurt my heart. It hurt my heart who are in the hospital, um, and but their families were so supportive, which sometimes our parents tend not to be as understanding of psychiatric issues, but the families of these two young boys were so supportive. I was so happy and it gave me so much hope that there is love and there is understanding in our communities um, where psych psychiatric issues won't be so mismanaged as they are now. Anyway, I went off on a whole tangent there, but that was an interesting part of my experience in the psych ED. Um, and the main thing that I was doing in the ED was I would interview a patient, but more oftentimes it was supervised. Um, and then most of what I did actually was calling for collaterals. So what is a collateral? If you liked the show House MD, you will love the idea of collateral. So you know how in house he would send the residents to like were they residents? I don't even know. But he would send a doctor to like go and investigate stuff. Like they would go to the patient's house or blah, blah, blah. So with the collateral, you're actually calling roommates, you're calling parents, you're calling siblings of the person who was in the ED to kind of figure out 
to see more of the picture of their uh, mental illness because when they come to the ED you're just kind of seeing a snippet so the people that you call to give that collateral um collateral history are telling you more about how this person has been doing outside of this episode so it was really really interesting and you also get to learn that illness often affects whole families not just an individual whether it is a mental illness whether it is things like chronic illness like diabetes whether it is um devastating things like cancer it affects groups of people it affects everyone who is within that sphere of the person they love who is going through that illness. And so I remember calling for collaterals and having mothers crying on the phone, having people on the phone talking about how when they're doing good, they're doing so good. Why is this happening to this person? And it was so like emotionally taxing. And I think one of the things that can be tricky is for myself and for other medical students who are a bit younger. So I'm going to graduate at 25 because I went to a BSMD program. Um, and there are people who would graduate younger than me or, or within a few years of me. Um, and sometimes if you don't have as much um, experience in these situations, in talking to people and empathizing with people in in allowing people's experiences to take space and kind of keeping that safe space and that sacred space for people to process and go through and release. Oftentimes, like calling for collateral was such a cathartic moment. It is really a big thing to know how to be there for the patient. And I think sometimes if you're younger, like I started my rotation, when I started my rotation, so when I did that rotation, I was a few months out from 24. I just turned 24. And that could have been a lot for like a 24 year old who doesn't have as much life experience or as much experience with kind of talking to people or um, being empathetic towards people, understanding different perspectives and lifestyles. Um, so I think if that's you, if you're someone who's a little bit more sheltered to the experiences of people, psych is a time to really explore that and to come into the situation with humility and to come into the situation open and ready to learn and to kind of keep your preconceived notions at the door when you come into it so that you can really gain the experience that you're there to gain and learn to be as empathetic as possible because your patients need that. Um, so it was, it was incredible, that experience, just being able to call for collaterals. And obviously, because you're a student, you have time. Like if you're the resident or you're the attending, you don't have all that time to spend just on the phone because you have patients to see, you have orders to put in. There are, there are other things to to that take place within the hospital. So the privilege of being a student is having that time so that you can spend that 30 or 45 minutes on the phone collecting a collateral or comforting a, a, a parent or a friend or a sibling. So that was nice. Um, other things about the rotation. People kind of think of psychiatry as the easy rotation. I don't necessarily think that. I think it's just a different type of rotation and you're, you're there to gain different skills. So kind of go in ready to gain those skills and go in trying to be as uh, the best version of yourself for your patients. Oftentimes, if you're someone who is struggling with mental illness yourself, I mean, we're in medical school. A lot of people are going through things. Some people have diagnosed anxiety, depression, all these things, taking medication, and etc. Maybe you've been um, in inpatient psych. Maybe you see a therapist or you have a psychiatrist. It can be very triggering. So make sure that you are taking care of yourself outside of this rotation. Um, I think any rotation can be triggering really, like if you're dealing with illness, but um, especially psych, if you're dealing with mental illness and particularly if you unfortunately have the experience of seeing people who aren't able to navigate the healthcare system as well, it can be very triggering and a little bit depressing. So take care of yourself in your psych rotation. I felt like the shelf was really straightforward. Um, I just read the pages of psych in my first aid. Um, I watched the sketchy farm videos just for a refresher. I I started watching and like I think if you're a third year, you know the Emma Holiday videos. 
I don't believe I watched one for Psych. It may be outdated at this point in time. Divine Intervention. I don't know if he has a Psych. If he does have a Psych shelf review, I didn't. I did watch it. I did watch the Psych shelf review. I'm not sure if it's up to date, but I would suggest it because I did watch the Divine Intervention one. I didn't watch the Emma Holiday one. I started to and I noticed that it was out of date. So if you are looking for a shelf review video, like an all-encompassing shelf review video, I would say in this case, probably Divine Intervention over Emma Holiday. Just because psych is something that like all of medicine, it's, it's constantly updating. So you have to make sure that your study resources are the most up-to-date um yeah and then i did your questions and that's how i passed the shelf and yeah so that was my experience with psychiatry it was really fun um and so i hope that i have a similar experience going into my elective thank you for watching this video yeah and then if you have any suggestions or requests for new videos please let me know i'm a fourth year i have so much time i have time to film so it should be fun and i will see you in the next one bye friends